live. Good morning, Faith Goodman. Sometimes your name is green, sometimes your name is gray. Sean, Sean Tucker, you've won the cinema tickets prize. Please contact Michelle. Sean, we did, I've notified you underneath the weekly rushes. Please, please, please don't want you to miss out on that wonderful opportunity. Um, are you in Ireland, Sean? We can make it work with whatever your local cinema chain is. Um, oh, look, there's Nance behind me. What's, what's she whispering about? I'm really whispering. Oh, okay, good. So you, so Kylie Mitchell, Bev Hartnell. Okay, so I'm going to crack on quite quickly because what I find is we always run out of time, don't we? We always run out of time. So oh, Dominic Raab, little Dominic, poor old Dominic Raab, hey? Who's feeling sorry for poor old little dooby wooby 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 booby? Little dooby 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 wooby 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 Morning, Bev Hartnell. Morning, Denise Drummond Mulvaney. Hi, Faith Goodman, Margaret O'Brien. Who's feeling sorry for Dominic Ruby, 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 Ruby? Oh. Um, Bully Beef says the front of the mirror. Obviously, there's no prizes for which way the press has gone. Left wing press. Bully Beef. New Tory scandal. Rob quits over insults and intimidation with swipe at probe as PM accused of weakness. Um, bully Beef. What do we think of it? No, no, no. That would be a no, says J says Faith Goodman. Not me, Elliot Gonzalez. Good riddance. Why do you say that, Elliot? Well, look, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to show you a photo that will really help represent what potentially some of those... Now, of course, what I have a problem with, it, my worry about this Dominic Raab story, right? He wrote his letter of resignation, which I, I read somewhere. It's here, here somewhere. This, this. And what they've definitely done is Dominic Raab and Rishi Sunak have sat together and said, look, you've got to go, mate. And he said, I know, but how can we turn this to our advantage? Let's call everyone snowflakes. Let's call everyone snowflakes and use this as another example of woke culture gone mad and how no one can cope with basically strong leadership, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they're trying to turn this to their advantage. And so all of the press are saying basically a bunch of softies in the civil service can cope with some strong bossing, you know, he's just a strong forthright boss, just wanting the best for our country, best for our country. So the right wing press have said things like this. Rob goes down swinging. Absolutely, Rob goes down swinging. And the mail says, was this the day that Britain became utterly ungovernable? Because a bully uh, was basically shown up to be a bully. The snowflake civil service that being. But as there's been a flurry of parting shots, as there, I just want to show you an image that maybe some of the civil servants had emblazoned on their minds and heads and, and retinas. But look, this is him at college. He was a boxing blue at Oxford. Look at him. You're not going to mess with him, are you? Look at that. His, his tone, his stature, his remarkable trapezoids. You ain't going to argue with him if he walks into your Whitehall office and says, where's the fucking hole punch, mate? You're going you're gonna to give this man stationery if he demands it. Uh, me too, my me too. The low bar for bullying is no bullying. Um, what do you think of him, guys? Yeah, you know, if I saw him, he, he'd frighten me, actually. If he walked in, I'd, I'd start to shake a little bit. But yeah, um, would you would you, would you, you talk to this man if you met him at the printing machine, at the photocopier? Would you? Me too. Video of Rob fuming because Sunak was chatting with Starmer. No, I didn't see that. Anyway, Dominic Ra. Boo hoo, boozy, 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 poor little wobby, 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 boo. Anyway, I'm sure he'll cope. I'm sure he'll be off to some multi billion pound. Uh, well, no, he's still, he's still a uh, politician, isn't he? Um, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, there's, by all accounts, going to be something like 50,000 uh, climate protesters in London today. As we've said a lot this week, entirely agree with the politics, entirely agree with the message, entirely agree with the cause. Not entirely sure they're hitting the right people. Um, but this is a warning that the police have made saying, don't whack the Tarquins. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm just, I love, the, Tarquin is the phrase I use for parents of kids in pubs that fall within private school catchment areas who eat uh, Sunday roasts with, um, with Yorkshire puddings the size of rugby balls. 
and their son, Johnny, uh, is running up the back of an 85-year-old elderly person and is screaming, I want to eat your head. But the parents are going, Tarquin, Tarquin, give the man a kiss, give the man a kiss. Um, so anyway, uh, please don't whack the Tarquins. Don't hit marathon runners, is what the police are saying. Warning to footy fans and runners. So basically, there's the possibility here that during the London Marathon, I, I tell you what, if someone ran at me with a, an, a, an Extinction Rebellion sort of flag over them, and I was at mile 24, and I was running like one of those toys you used to get where you press the bottom and, you know, the legs would go like that, I, I, I muster up the strength to hit them, for sure. Um, but anyway, yeah, Extinction Rebellion. Who's lost the blue tick? Who's lost their blue tick? Nadia has. Nads has lost her blue tick. Dina's never going to get one now. <laughs> what, unless you pay for it? Unless you pay for it. This is it. Are you... Okay, guys. What do you... What, as potentially non-blue tickers, do you rate the person... Who do you rate more? Someone who carries on and pays for the blue tick or someone who just goes, no, I don't want a blue tick anymore. I never even wanted one in the first place nosies. Which which of those which of those do you fall into? Because here we have: is it blue tick to blue tick or not to blue tick? Who did and who didn't pay for the blue tick? Are you in the it crowd, as the mirror as the sun says, or are you in the twit crowd? Which are you? Who do you prefer? Uh, I think Trump will get back on Twitter now. What? Because he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't a clue what that is, Julie, Julie Hill. What a blue tick? You, you get a blue tick on Twitter like on Instagram if you are. A public figure or a sort of relatively well-known person. Depends on the circumstance. Nicola H says, fuck the blue tick. Um, Elliot, Elliot Gonzalez says it. Not having a blue tick is the new blue tick. I've lost mine, but no way I'm paying for one. Elliot, I agree. But hey, what a bit of a pisser though, isn't it? Losing it. It's just like, you know, especially for us civilians. For civilians. Civilians feel like they've maybe entered the upper echelons of some kind of blue tickery. But you know what I mean. Anyway, no, you're right. I think the not having a blue tick is the new blue tick. What else do you say? Help me distinguish celeb from scammer, says Emma Walsh. Taking it away from genuine celebs is bloody ridiculous. It's a kind of online protection. I kind of agree. Um, the it crowd, people who aren't paying, include Tom Cruise, Katie Perry, not Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Katie Perry, uh, Kylie Minogue, Nigella Lawson, too cool for school. She's too busy using a microwave. Actor Samuel L. Jackson, singer Elton John, he's so uber cool. James Corden, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. Who's paying? Who's a twit? Let's call them the twits. Uh, TV host Holly Willoughby, um, Ekin Sue, Giovanna Fletcher, Gary Lineker. Uh, okay. A mixed bag, a mixed bag of people there, keeping them. I think the thing now is not to keep, I think you look a bit, who thinks desperation is going to creep in if you keep the blue tick? Because just because you, because the thing is, even if you pay for your blue tick, it doesn't mean anyone else can't get a blue tick in your name. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean anything. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Um, who now no longer books an appointment at their GPs because they're not confident and they don't believe they're going to be able to see them? Come on, put your hand up. I would do the poll, but I'm on stream yard and I can't. Put your hand up or say me if you think more often now, you think to yourself, actually, normally I would have gone to the GP or the doctor to, to see them about this, but I won't now because I don't think the system can cope. Me, I don't. Oh, look, lots of you. Yeah, I don't actually. Not that I would in the first place. I mean, I'm not one for you going to the doctors, but I, I, I really don't. I feel less inclined now than ever. Partly because you think thousands of other people need it, but partly because you think, i tell you what I actually think as a hypochondriac. I think, what if something awful has happened or develops, and then I have to enter a system that can't cope? I'd rather not know. Um, okay, so this is a piece in the mirror that says that 10 million people have given up on their GP. Around 10 million people gave up on getting a GP appointment in a single oh, month. exactly what they wanted. Yeah. One in five adults reported needing to contact their GP, but decided not to. What sort of ticking time bomb, especially around things like cancer and long-term illness, illnesses, you know, dementia, diabetes, things like that, so, you know. Um, 
Hypo, Julie Hilton. Uh, yeah, Sarah Clift. I can't get an appointment unless it's for bloods. Sarah Clift. Yeah, asthma checks can get them like that. My doctors are still pretty good. I wait. It's not about weight. It's not about not being able. Sorry, this isn't about not being able to get an appointment. This is about choosing not to book an appointment uh, because for a variety of reasons, because you think the system can't cope or because you think they're not going to be able to do anything or anything like that. Uh, I was staggered by that number. I think it's quite, it's quite a big number. Don't you think? Um, so, uh, Corden, James Corden, Elliot, I pulled this story uh, for you a little bit. Um, James Corden, I've never been this scared in my career. James Corden has admitted he's terrified as he prepares to leave his hit US chat show. It's a, quite a bold move, isn't it? At 44, he's going to bow. He's going to bow out from the Late Late Show after eight years in the hot seat. I mean, when you're sat in such a an influential place in su- at, at the epicenter of Hollywood, having being you know, and I mean this in the kindest way, being the most unlikeliest of superstars to have kind of got to Hollywood in a sense. What a bold move to kind of say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to stop that. Move, turn my back. Turn my back on it. Now, um, uh, Dina, yeah. are you prepared this week? Is Dina, well, I want to know what Dina's going to do this week. Yeah. When? When is it? Oh, tomorrow. What are you going to be? I don't know what, you're going to say. what are you doing tomorrow at three o'clock? I'm turning off my phone. <laughs> what are you doing at three o'clock tomorrow, Nads? Uh, she doesn't know anything. Wishing I turned off. The alarm. Yeah, here you go. This is how you can stop your phone going off when they uh, issue the emergency alert system. Does anyone think there's any chilling connection between the emergency alert system and the fact that the Russians are currently monitoring our entire energy resources in the North Sea? Does anyone think there's a vague connection between them mapping out our wind turbines and oil rigs and pipe system and us getting some alert tomorrow? For anyone who doesn't know in the UK, this is a, an emergency alert system is going to be tested on our phones at three o'clock tomorrow. The, the argument is that this is going to be tested as an alert. Think of how when you had your NHS COVID app and you would get a notification saying there's been an outbreak locally. And then suddenly you'd go, all oh, right, OK. Um, then this will be at three o'clock tomorrow. Mobile devices across the UK will receive a text and a, a test alert that will sound quite alarming. Um, but it's in ca- going to be used as a test in case but it's never needed in the future for, they say, floods, earthquakes, uh, plague, um, yeah, sort of uh, locusts, anything like that. But also potentially, I guess, for any kind of invasion, any invasion. I mean, I, I don't know how you announce this and pretend that it's not something more significant than it is. So anyway, here you go. Using your iPhone, open settings. Go to notifications, go to emergency alerts, toggle off both extreme alerts and severe alerts. And and by doing this, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, you won't know that your head's going to be chomped off in about 10 minutes. Um, So much to look forward to. (laughs) Reese Roberts, zombie and aliens, absolutely. Did anyone see the... There was footage, talking of aliens, there was footage released... Was it yesterday? Oh, footage released yesterday of a drone footage... Over, I think, Syria, over over a country in the Middle East, where the drone footage followed a, U, a UFO. Did you see it? It's remarkable footage, following an orb. It's a flying orb. It's the most convincing footage I've seen of a UFO yet. Check it out. Put drone footage UFO Middle East. It'll come up. I, I wonder sometimes if it was probably Nadia and, 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 Nadia and Dina's father playing with his remote, remote control ball again. Um, Beauty Queen faces 25-year prison hell. A uh, woman who once competed for Miss England is being held in a Mexican jail. I, these stories always get me. I don't know why, but, you know, it's like, just be careful. She took 250... Be careful. I don't mean, like, be careful, don't get caught. I mean, just don't ever think about drugs, guys. Don't do drugs. To quote Grange Hill, just say no. Beauty Queen faces 25-year prison hell, £250,000 worth of ketamine. What was she thinking? It was found in her luggage as she flew into Cancun Airport. It's either, I mean, I don't know what her argument would have been. Maybe I have an enormous horse that I'm attending to when I get out there. An enormous horse that I need to inject. 
Um, KTK seems like an excessive sentence. Well, I always find with these stories that if you're willing to take the risk, if you're taking £250,000 worth of ketamine into Mexico, at some point, I think you need to go on Google and check out what's the worst sentence I could possibly receive if I get caught. I think, you know, due diligence and all that kind of thing. Got to do your due diligence. Um, coronation cash in. Not surprisingly, London hotels are exploiting the king, king's big weekend as he gets a crown put on his head and is anointed with all sorts of weird oils. Um, London hotels, exp- basically, we're going to watch the king go to a spa, aren't we? He's going to have oils. He's going to have all sorts of kind of little things just dipped, dipped and dipped all over his forehead. London hotels are exploiting the king's big weekend with price hikes of up to 171%. Guys. That means if you're staying in a travel lodge for £79, it's probably going to be about 210 <sighs> Shocking, isn't it? Shocking. Um, SOS. Oh, look. Look at this. This is interesting. SOS dating app has a... Alert- look, this is a new dating app. This is a good one, girls. Yeah. A new dating app will now allow users to send an SOS alert if they feel un- unsafe uh, whilst with a date they found on the app. Apparently, police reports of sex offences linked to dating apps soared nearly 200% between 2017. I guess, you know, it's kind of no surprise that dating apps will encourage people to get quick access to potential victims, right? So this is a dating app that allows you to send an SOS, which I think is quite good. Uh, It'll send it to loved ones if they feel that they're in in any immediate danger. Wow. Can we please have some way of knowing... Where all the pervs are. Well, I think. Well, I, mean, I, think, well, I want an app telling me whether I want, I, want, I, want, I want the men to be doing something. Why is there always something else we've got to do? You heard it here first. What's this one here? What have I got here? here. Spielberg rally, not moving on from that. Debrett's, the book on etiquette. It's a great idea, isn't it, Nicola Randall? Pitch a tent along the mile, free accommodation, Andrea Crash. Back at the class, Andrea. Uh, Debrett's has issued some definitive texts and definitive rules on mobile phone manners. This is, you know, the posh book of behavior and all that kind of stuff. Let me just check my battery's going to last. Yeah, I'm all right. Um, so modern matters of form. With the advent of smartphones, people inevitably do take photographs, but these should have no place at more formal events and are frowned upon at garden parties. Who the fuck has been to a garden party in recent years? Who goes to garden party? A garden? Hey, you having a garden party, Tarquin? When sending condolences, email should only be used in exceptional circumstances. Mobile should be switched off. Well, this is a, this is obvious. Mobile should be switched off at funerals and all silent activities such as checking email avoided. I don't think you should have a mobile out, should you, at uh, a funeral. Um, group WhatsApp chats should only be used to talk about subjects that are relevant to members of the group. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's always rude to pay more attention to a mobile than a person in the flesh. Say that to most families sat around the telly of an evening, eh? Don't know why I pulled a story about um, national uh, national trust car parks and at, oh look at this, I like this story. Look, look at this. This what's this parrot doing, guys? Who likes a parrot? Fuck off! Yeah. Beg your pardon. Who likes a parrot? There used to be more parrots in the seventies. Did, did more people have parrots in the seventies? I'm sure they did. Every, every household I went in, you'd hear sort of pretty poly, fuck off. Um, this is the story of tech savvy parrots uh, have their friends at Beacon Call. Lonely parrots have been trained how to video call each other. <laughs> parrots can call each other for company. If, if you watch the uh, No Name Sunday show this weekend, uh, Maddie has found such a sweet meme of a conference call between two animals. Oh my God, it's so good. A conference call. So this is this is technology which is allowing birds to uh, ring a bell with their beaks. They can, they can hit the screen. They can choose who they talk to. Uh, some even said the name of the parrot that they wanted to see. They say, I want to see Rosie. I want to see Rosie. And then, and then Rosie comes up. I mean, I bet it better not have the system attached to the uh, to to the Wi-Fi because I mean, if they say "fuck it," something awful could come up, couldn't it? Um, so this one, oh, girls, you'll like this one. 
Take stock. The Bolognese is getting a Bolognese is getting a revamp. Because it's the Croydonese. That's the Croydonese. There you go. This is the look. The official. This is the official recipe for Bolognese. Look at this. The official recipe for Bolognese has been updated for the first time in forty years. By who? By the Italians? Italian Cookery Academy. Oh. Okay. In Bologna, and they've said get rid of the cream. Oh. Oh, is the original one? Yeah. Yeah. And they say no longer do you have to use. Cartella, which is a cut of beef taken from the diaphragm. Wow! It has to. You can now use. You you can now use stock cubes. Whoa! Oh, sorry, I've gone gone to the wrong. Yeah, there we go. That one there. Take stock. If you haven't seen it, go back to the curly cooks where Dina does uh, spaghetti croydonese. Croydonese. That's right. Carla Martin used to live in Croydon. Poor thing. You got out. Well done. Um, I'm just, I only want to quickly touch upon this story because it's one of those stories that when it started, I thought, oh yeah, right. This is, this is a couple of Hollywood A-listers just having a bit of a laugh, but this is Wrexham Football Club. And this story I like because Ryan Reynolds, who doesn't love Ryan Reynolds and Rob oh, McKellen, isn't he gorgeous? He, and he's funny. And Rob McKellen, McKellany, I can never pronounce his name, Rob McKellany, uh, they've obviously invested in, supported and backed Wrexham. And today is a big day for Wrexham, because if they, after something like 15 years, if they beat, uh, who are they playing today? They're playing someone today that if they win the match, they could go back into, uh, yeah, they could be promoted if they beat Boreham Wood today. They could return to the Football League. And so what I like about this is, even straight men love Ryan Reynolds because you're lollipop, absolutely right. What I love about this is they've stuck with it. They repeatedly go back to Wrexham. It's given the it's given the fans, the players, the population of Wrexham just fun. They've been put on the map, and and it looks like Wrexham could could. Win. I mean, who can see the Hollywood film? Who can see the Hollywood? Will Ryan Reynolds play himself? Have you seen Ryan's film? How to? Oh no, has he done one? I must check that out. I don't know how to. Rob McK Rob McKellar Rob McKellany Rob McKellany. Um, Dina, you're going to love this story. Yeah. I've got an image here of Night Fever, Night Fever. Yeah. Um, John Travolta's film suit, it cost $100 for the film. It's going to go at auction for $200,000. $200,000 catching the fever. Travolta's film suit. Co so, what's funny about this is when they were shooting this film, someone will have said, Can someone just Someone will have said, can someone just bugger off and quickly get one of those white suits that they sell down at the local kind of catering place? Now it's worth 100000 because he wore it in a film. Would you buy it? I wouldn't. But yeah, I like him. I, I like that film. That's such an iconic image, isn't it? What an iconic image. Bing! Um, what's your favourite 70s dish? Will it? Ah, oh, Andrea Crash. Vital question. Will it still have? Would you like? Would you like? Um, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, yeah, I've forgotten his name. John Travolta. Would you like John Travolta's jacket, girls? They're busy. They're busy conferring. Good film, man. Good soundtrack. It's an eighteen, wasn't it? An eighteen or an X when it came out. Um, Saturday Night Fever. I think it was. I think it was. It's quite. It's quite saucy. What's your favourite seventies dish? You're right. Nick's prawn cocktail, food treat. Oh, girls, I should do this on the on the curly cooks. What the 1970s dinner party classic prawn cocktail is back again. Oh, you're already ready. Ready. Oh, prawn cocktail. Oh, we've got to do a 70s curly cooks. Prawn cocktails are making a comeback as Brits return to hosting 70s style dinner parties. Wow, this is so over. That's so weird. We're going to be doing this. We've already planned it. Include. Planned it. Are you all going to include an ashtray with keys in it? We've got everything. You won't believe what we've got. The props. Oh my god. Yeah. It's going to get. It's going to get saucy, guys. Okay, right. Where did we say it was going to get saucy? Uh, it's just my imagination. Ah, uh, Mark! What was that? Tomato. Naughty. Oh, stop it, Mark. Don't. I need those tomatoes. Stop it. So this is the story of who flung it. Seaside town in fear due to a mysterious tomato thrower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cops are hoping to catch up with a prankster hurling tomatoes at passers-by. 
There's a phantom tomato thrower uh, in Eastbourne and Hastings. In Eastbourne and yeah, Hastings. officers, seriously, officers are appealing for witnesses to a series of unprovoked attacks. On Wednesday, a person walking in Hastings at 7.30 were hit in the face with an apple and then a tomato. On Friday, a person was hit with a tomato in Eastbourne. Shortly after this, a person was hit on the head with a tomato and a put. A lot of tomato throwing. My friend is in Hastings. I don't see what she knows. Go and ask her. Catch up with her. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, dear. A uh, little blast from the past here. Any fans of uh, Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels? A little reunion of the cast there. Uh, Jason Statham, 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 Statham. Uh, Jason Fleming and good old Dexter Fletcher there at the la London launch of his new film, Ghosted. Little image there, little blast from the park. Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels was a, was a seminal moment in British filmmaking. It really was. Big moment. Um, who are we? Barmy army of sheep invade streets. I saw, I pulled this because there was another story last week about goats being allowed to roam wild in a, in a village or a town in the Clandidno, I think, in the Wales. Uh, free roaming hooligan sheep are terrorizing a village. They're keeping residents up all night, destroying their gardens and using their lawns as a loo. I think keeping them up at night is a bit of an exaggeration, right? I mean, a sheep eating your grass isn't going to make a lot of noise. Let's be honest. Who are you? Okay, we've often said that the, the way to a revolution in the UK re revolves around a cup of tea. So uh, the uh, Daily Star says, perfect cuppa. Expert says put milk in last and dunk privately. A tea expert has revealed the way to make a perfect cup of tea. I wish they'd bloody tell me what this is so that I can work it out for Nadia. Um, Jane Malion says we should use a teapot and loose tea. Fuck that. Don't have, Fuck that. Has that sort of life anymore. Right. All I'm going to say, Jace, to Jane Malion, is fuck that shit for a game of soldiers. We are not using a teapot, loose tea, and then pouring the water. No. I want a good old-fashioned bag, possibly two, in a cup, bish bash bosh. One thing I would top tip for a strong cup of tea, when you pour the hot water into the cup with the tea bag, make sure the arc of the water hits the tea bag. Direct. Thrust, thus, pushing the tea leaves out and the flavour into the cup. That's what I do for Nads. She doesn't know this artistry goes into it when I, when I do it. Um, and so finally, National Tea... Oh, guys, it was National Tea Day yesterday. Oh, Faith no. Goodman. Tea bag, milk, yes. then water. No tea bagging here, missus. Okay, don't forget, in uh, 15 minutes, we're going to be in the Curly Cooks. And here's two final little picture, picture, picture stories. Wait over Mog. Look at this. This massive Moggy's new owner has got a lot on her hands. Patches is two stone nine pounds. Wow. The Guinness World Record for heaviest cat was three stone two pounds. Wow. Look at that. It's a fat cat. And just to calm us all down. Two photo stories. Okay, here we go. Last one. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? This is the Milky Way behind Portland Bill Lighthouse in Dorset. Obviously, the image was made using a motorized star tracker. Um, starry, starry night. How stunning is that? I mean, obviously, these photos are great, these ones at night of stars and clusters and universes. But of course, because we can't see it with the naked eye, it's kind of a lie. It's just a shameful lie. But I want us to leave with this last image that we all saw at the beginning of this. We just want to be reminded of poor old little Robbie, 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 Darby. There he is. You would not mess with him, would you? I bet he's photocopied his ass on the photocopier. I promise you he has. Anyway, on that note, guys, have a lovely Saturday. Hope you enjoy the Curly Cooks. It's coming in a minute. And don't forget, there's a big half announcement. Basically, a half-baked a half -baked announcement will be happening um, in a minute. We're doing, I'm doing a roast beef dinner in New Yorkshire. A roast beef. We're doing a gorgeous sausage and mashed vegan. <laughs> but what's she cooking? And we've got vegan. She's doing a sausage, but what's she cooking? You get it. All right. Okay. Mark, please stop playing the tomatoes. We're going to pick it up and pull them. It is purely to do with the story. It wasn't me being annoying. annoying. Guy oh! Oh! oh, it's got all over my screen. Mm, yum.
Good shot. All right, guys. Have a lovely day. See you in about 15 minutes.